welcome back. We mentioned it at the start, but we'll start with moves among the Magnificent Seven, the clutch of shares you really wish you'd owned in 2023. In big tech land, Netflix is suddenly back on form. Tesla isn't. Microsoft is just a combine harvester that will turn the world <laughs> into its artificially engineered playground. And heaven help you if you're still an analog specimen, which is most of us here, except maybe Bright and actually Simon now, if you've been chat GPT -ing yourself. I'm chat GPT, -ing, but I still play my vinyl on Friday evenings. <laughs> so that's like violin, did I hear you say? You're a renaissance man. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Brad. It's Vinyl. You, you need balance oh, in your life. You need yeah, balance. no, no, that's perfect balance. I like that. Uh, in terms of Tesla, I mean... Yeah, what's the Tesla story? I think it's just the bad news, you know, the headlines around yeah. uh, <coughs> people not wanting enough EVs, while Europe is still buying them, you know, in mass. But, but two million sales for the is year is not there. Model 3 is the most popular car in the world. Record year, by the way. Yeah, Model, Model 3 is the car to beat, but the problem is there's still BYD and other companies sure, sure. that are coming out of, you know, I the East. Yeah, you've got to look at you've got to look at Tesla in a different way. It's not a motor company. You've got to look at it as a, as a tech company. You've got to look know, at its that's battery that's power. Wayne. I, I don't know. And you've got to look at its, its AI. You've got to look at all the other things it does. And I give it a chance on that one. And they're still very popular cars. But you look at GM Cruise, who's doing the autonomous driving, right? They've done how many kilometers? Yeah. Tesla's got all those yeah. millions yeah. of cars and the data. I mean, yeah. they are yeah. thousands of times ahead of anyone yeah. on autonomous. That's their that's story. So that's the competitive advantage. Of that, Tesla. You know, the, mm. Yes, that they've got you know, the leg up on everyone. Yeah. And they're still using it and they're not slowing down. Yeah. But I mean, the negative, like you said, journalists, I think it was... Um, there are car rental companies that are saying yeah, EV, EV demand, ah, Hertz, yeah. for example. I mean, Hertz is fighting yeah. for their own survival. <laughs> it's not because people don't want EVs. So that's a different They story don't want Hertz. Care. Exactly. But now, journalists take that and make it a headline. And obviously, it reinforces itself as negative news. You've got to learn to drive an EV. That's why. You know, if I suddenly went to Hertz and they said, do you want an EV? I said, not on your life. You know, I've never driven one. And believe me, it takes a completely different application to drive an EV. And right. have you seen the Model Y steering? It's not a steering wheel that you know. Yeah. It's, a, it's a thing that yeah. looks like yeah. a TV. And game. apparently so you put your foot in that accelerator and it, your head it flies. in the boot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I think, yeah. So if this is first time buying and first time driving an EV, don't go to Hertz or anything so you're like that. You're Just, talking you've got to practice at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to adapt first. <laughs> okay. Okay, what about Microsoft becoming a $3 trillion company? Is that just inevitable? I mean, well, that's three times bigger than the JSE. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> just to put it in perspective. Sure. Yeah. Yes. And if you put Apple on, put them together, that's six times bigger than the JSE. You take the Magnificent Seven. Seven, Africa. then it's just <laughs> bigger infinity. Than <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But Microsoft, I was actually looking at yeah. the chart, and you look at that lost decade oh. under Obama, and then Sasha Nadella came along, and he just... It changed the whole model. Absolutely yeah. changed it. And it was more than just going into into AI, more than just going into cloud. It was small things, like on a Mac, my subscription office was like basis. 10 years old, yeah. and now suddenly it updates every other yeah. week. And mm -hmm. subscri yeah, yeah, yeah. subscription subscri based Software as a service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the... He took that approach of SAS and it's working out. Uh, in terms of, you know, people always say Steve Ballmer didn't do a great job, but apparently most of the things actually came from 2008, 2009. And guess who, who was yeah. then? It was his baby. And then obviously the current management is taking it to the next level. Mm. But he was there when they were, yeah. you know, being founded. But and I he I said, I yes, it gave a thumbs up. Confidence in Steve Baum. I know that he owns even Cloud. I know. Cloud was Steve Baum. He was a no. weird owner. Yes. I mean, he bought no. Nokia for goodness sake. <laughs> no, 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 but it even but you Cloud can't do without. Baum. You can't do with Office without no. Office 365. Yeah. But I now pay you like a thousand bucks a year. I get five licenses, yeah. five terabytes of your spreadsheet, Best thing your ever. Word. Everything. It works across and all my yeah. platforms. Yeah. Mm. Well, for the doubters, you ask, where's SA's AI? We give you Carew. <laughs> because if your driving isn't up to speed, your insurance premiums are going to know about it. Mm. Only SA has now fallen back on its growth engine. Mm. Although, they thank heavens for the local earnings when you're going large abroad. Are we still seeing very strong growth coming through in South Africa. But clearly, where well, we're seeing the real growth coming through now is in Asia and in Europe. A second, so South Africa is going to be traditionally our fastest growing uh, segment to now. Uh, Asia is first, then it's Europe, and then it's South Africa. Uh, you, you know, the growth in our presence in these regions not only allows us to continue to grow our business sustainably, but it also brings a lot of insights uh, that we obviously transfer to South Africa. 
Okay, now you can. Yeah, I'm saying this is the AI we don't need. I'm no. already, I'm already struggling with discovery. Asking me to, you know, drive between <laughs> sixty and eighty kilometers. I drive, an hour, like I a drive a roadster. You're not putting a tracker in my car. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> roadster, not happening. <laughs> no, no, I'd be banned from driving if they had to track the way I go over those bumps. That's Whatever it is, yeah. Because yeah, exactly. you're looking at your phone. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I just get impatient. You know, stop over the speed bumps or around the speed circles. I just... You're I definitely I not easy not drivers. Is, I, I drive an SUV, so it's worse because I want to ram those bumps. <laughs> and so and I'm like, oh, discovery. Mm -hmm. No, 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 we don't need that. But I like the fact that that technology is coming from home. I yeah. mean, it's something to be proud about. Yeah. Uh, and do you like the what they're doing? Their earnings were up. Uh, they took an impairment, although they said then, <laughs> I think in the next set of results, that would work through the system. Yeah, for Kazuka. <coughs> What do I, you don't make know. Of I watch this company carefully. I'm, I'm indifferent. I'm neither bullish or bearish. I'm just trying to learn about it. And I can't get a grip on, 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 on the business. And mainly the share price goes all over the place. You know, it just winds its way sideways. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a lot of people who like it. There are a, a certainly a huge number of supporters. But I don't know. I just can't get in. You know when I say I can't get into it? I don't know. But if you look at the rest of the South African market, it's it's holding its own because most companies are actually going down. Mm. It's yeah, really it's flat, flat, and yes. green. Yeah. I try to look at Mix as well, which is now in the U.S. Same thing. You know, never got a grip on mm. on this kind of thing. Well, by now we've had plenty of December trading updates from South Africa's retailers. Not too bad, not too great either. If you're Woolworths and the wealthy can't keep up with food inflation, uh, actually, here's Kevin Ling's on that issue. Yeah, food inflation is up at over 8%. That's way too high. It's a big part of the basket. We see it impacting particularly uh, low-income individuals substantially. So it's not as if you would be comfortable with the number where it is now. But where we are a bit more encouraged is not long ago we were talking about an El Nino effect disrupting our weather pattern. That doesn't seem to be playing out. Uh, we were worried about some global pressure on food prices. That's not really playing out. A lot of base effect in these numbers, hugely so. But I looked at clicks. They had their 22nd December, best day ever. Uh, December was really strong. It, 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 folks were out there spending. Bank Serve Africa data this week. You know, wow. the, the card transactions up 13% in December. We were poor, but man, we were spending. No, but... <laughs> In, I understand the spending. I already explained that earlier in the show. But what we need to understand as South Africans is that our rand keeps weakening against, you know, stronger currencies or you know, Western currencies, and that's how we source goods and inputs uh, for all of these things that we make and generate here at home. So as long as that's happening, w there's no solution for us. I mean, ours in FMCG. I mean, things like palm oil. Obviously, yeah. the price is stable in dollars but in your home currency it's not so palm oil is used as an input for many different things from chocolates to whatever you know cremora and other things but i mean this lays man exactly <laughs> you, you you literally it, it's going to be very hard to be competitive in that matter hence why every single time you look at those numbers of inf um, food inflation yeah. it's up eight eight point eight point five percent we got carried That's away with the inflation numbers saying oh food's coming down you know it's moderating it's only eight and a half percent. Only I mean, eight and a half percent. That's crazy. And when, you're getting, and when you're getting, if you're getting yeah. any salary increases, they're probably more like five percent, or I maybe in the midpoint of the Reserve Bank's target range, which is four and a half percent. And your food basket has run away with you. I was looking at the price of olive oil yesterday, and I was horrified. I realise this sounds a bit middle class, but uh, yeah. it's not entirely so. <laughs> but um, uh, probably two months ago, when I bought a bottle of olive oil, it was 149 rand. It's now about 229 yeah. rand. That's an astounding jump. In I remember when it was 40 supply. bucks not so long ago. But that's why I think you can't, you know, this core inflation and headline, it's rubbish. We're much more headline than we are core. Mm. You know, we fuel and food. You yeah. can't just ignore it, you know, rent and all the other stuff that goes in. And it's like EBITDA, those are the two <laughs> things I can't stand. EBITDA and core inflation. You know, it's, these are real. It's a real, you know, food is real. For most of the people, that's where their entire uh, salary checkers, yeah. And, and this is the argument, and I'm sorry, I'm going back to kind of the mm. first part of the show. We were talked about the Saab, and you know mm. they left interest rates mm. on hold. Brian Cantor from Investec mm. and Graham Barr from UCT yeah. have argued in various pieces for the Financial Mail in the last year that we are just on the wrong track with, resor with regards it's to our monetary policy because the thing that affects our inflation is the rand. Yeah. Yeah. And and if you yeah. don't have any growth, <laughs> mm. which you're not going to yeah. get any chance of 
if um, interest rates are so high, if you're borrowing at 11.75%, I mean, I don't know how you afford that, uh, there's going to be no growth. And if there's no growth, the economy is going to weaken and the rand's going to weaken. Mm. And inflation, it's, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle that we find ourselves in. Yeah, so the rand, if you take the inflation differential, which is the level at which we depreciate, uh, if the US is coming down to two and we're still in the fives, if you looked at the latest mm. thing, that's a 3%. Mm -hmm. per annum. Many now, 3% doesn't sound like a lot. Just compound that. Well, to Bright's that's point, that's 3% yeah. onto palm oil and everything yeah. else that we bring in. Well, moving on to Sasso, under the cosh, and you can see why. No one likes a fossil fuel producer, mm -hmm. and the chemicals market is in the dwang, which is why the shares on the bargain <laughs> basement rack. I love it. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, my crystal challenge, I'm putting everything together. What are the three companies that everybody's choosing? Sabania, Cecil, <laughs> Pick and Pay, the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Every dog has its day. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, when I was on holiday in December, every time I glimpsed at the at Twitters, everyone was like, Cecil's going to yeah, the moon. Yeah. Like, well, like, did you see week. the numbers? No, no, but did you see the numbers and what management was saying? I don't know, man. It's tough. It's structural. Yeah. It's tough and it's not fun being. Clearly, so none of you have read the cover story I wrote this week. On Cecil? Yes. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, yeah. well. <laughs> did you read it or did you see No, I just saw the cover story. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the cover story. <laughs> I'm still going to get my hands blow your own me. trumpet on the show. I mean, if no one else is going to. Um, but uh, JP Morgan said they have an intractable problem, and I think that yeah. sums it up. Uh, they've got to go green, but the cost of going green is immense. Yeah, um, they're a fossil producer squared. They make fuel from coal. And make uh, it from and cheap coal. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know how they work their way out of this conundrum. You either buy expensive coal or you buy gas, which takes away their profit. Yeah. Mm. So, no real future. Mm. No. So, <laughs> maybe co reconsider all crystal very difficult, challenges. Yeah. And you'd never say that BHP, the miner, has just been slapped with a $9.7 billion fine for its part in the 2015 <laughs> dam collapse in Brazil that killed 19 yeah. people and contaminated kilometers of waterways all the way to the Atlantic. A Brazilian court yesterday ordered BHP and Vale to pay up. Can you hear the ka ching among its, its legal teams? <laughs> but um, corporates, just, just like when Facebook or Meta gets fined, whatever billion, for them it's just, yeah, it's a cost item, no problem. It cost it business same with miners journal entry now this is expensive but that should never have happened mm. yeah you know uh, slime dams that's a heavy engineering project that they should never have allowed to happen especially a business like BHP which is always a top miner yeah mm. But well, anyway. finally, you could call this peak middle class, but we say finally. Dog owners in the Italian province have been forced to provide a sample of their pet's <laughs> DNA as officials try to tackle the scourge of dog doo-doo on the streets, <laughs> according to Sky News. <laughs> the plan means abandoned turds can be gen genetically tested and traced back to a dog <laughs> whose owner could be fined anywhere between 50 <laughs> and 500 euros. Just take a bag, we it say. Uh, I know, it sounds like an expensive... Yeah. Project. Yeah, like for what? For just for the just pick up the poo, man. And if you see someone not picking up their poo, just pick it up. <laughs> like how they do it in New York. Yeah. And yes. Australia, wherever, UK, everybody walks around with these I bags. Know, but yeah. not in South Africa. I never understand. Yeah, I know. And apparently South no, Africa, no, worst I offenders know. and Italy. Go run in a park here. Yeah. Emerentia. Mm. Uh, <laughs> 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 <Emerentia. laughs> I'm one of those offenders. So let me just <laughs> oh, well, that's it. Last day of the program. <laughs> and that's where we leave it. David Brown, thanks for joining us. Have a good evening and a great weekend.